is Lana from Lana Under Pressure. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my Grandma Bunny's Jewish Pot Roast in the Instant Pot. There's a ton of pot roast recipes for the Instant Pot and the electric pressure cooker out there. The reason I wanted to convert my grandmother's pot roast recipe for the Instant Pot and create my own is because when I was doing some research looking at them, there were two things that I found that most pot roast recipes out there for the Instant Pot have in common. One, either they have you cooking the potatoes and carrots and the vegetables after the meat or later. So what I noticed was a lot of them would cook the meat for a certain amount of time, then you had to remember to release the pressure, add the vegetables, and then pressure cook it again. Well, I can't remember all that. I can't even, you know, remember my kids' names sometimes. So there's no way I'm gonna remember to stop cooking. I wanted to have a recipe where I could cook everything at once. Then I found that recipes where the potatoes and the carrots were cooking all together, but what they ended up doing was putting them in foil to keep them from getting mushy. But the thing about real Jewish pot roast and what makes it so great is that the potatoes and carrots and everything is cooking together in that sauce. That's what makes my grandmother's recipe so wonderful. So I worked really hard trying to figure out a way and come up with a way where you can cook the beef of the pot roast, the meat, with the vegetables in the sauce, but not have everything come out mushy or undercooked. Everything comes out perfect, and I think you're gonna really enjoy this recipe. The traditional cut used in a pot roast comes from the chuck or the shoulder. What I have here was actually labeled in the store, I think it said a chuck beef pot roast, so that's perfect. But you can use any chuck roast that you can find. What you want to make sure is you want to, if it's not already two inches thick, you want to go ahead then and cut it two inches thick. So if you have like the chuck tenderloin or a big chuck roast, just cut that in half so that you have a two inch thick piece. And then we're going to cut it into three to four inch pieces. And that's going to help lessen the amount of time that we have to put it in the instant pot so that everything can cook together. The first step is to prepare our chuck roast. And what I've gone ahead and done was I cut the, both of those steaks into three to four inch large chunks. And this is gonna help us cook everything together. Once you've done that, you should have about three to four pounds of chuck roast. Sprinkle it liberally with salt and pepper, and then we're gonna set it aside and move on to step two. To make the liquid we're going to cook our pot roast in, we're going to start off with one and a half cups of plain water. And to that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of chicken bouillon. Now I'm using better than bouillon, but if you have a bouillon cube, you can just use one cube and dissolve that. You can also use one and a half cups of chicken broth. You can even use beef broth if that's what you have. And I'm gonna whisk that together. Now to that, I'm gonna add five and a half ounce cans of tomato juice. And these are the standard, like the small little cans that you'll find. But if you just have like a big bottle, it's about one cup of tomato juice. Then I'm gonna add just plain ketchup, and this is a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna add a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. And finally, two tablespoons of tomato paste. And it doesn't have to be a perfect measurement, just a good heaping tablespoon. Now, whenever I'm cooking with tomato paste or any tomato products, I love to mix that into the liquid first before I add it to the Instant Pot because I find that that helps not get the burn notice. And if you have trouble with the burn notice, I have a great video that I'll link up at the top to show you how not to get the burn notice and solve some of those problems because I used to get it all the time. And now that we've mixed that, we're gonna set that aside. To prepare the vegetables is really easy. I have here one large yellow onion, and these are diced in pretty large pieces, so you don't have to dice anything really small. For the potatoes, I use red, but you can use white potatoes, and I peel them and just cut them in half. You don't want to use russets because russets, when they cook this long, those will kind of get a little mushy. Whereas the like waxy potatoes, like your red potatoes and your white potatoes will really hold up. I also have four to six large carrots that I've peeled and cut into about two inch pieces. Now these may 
seem like large pieces, but I promise, once it's all cooked, they're really easy to eat. They'll be fork tender, but not mushy. So you don't have to worry that you're serving people these huge pieces of carrots because it's gonna come out great. Easy to cut just with a fork. We're finished with all our prep and now it's time to get cooking. And you're gonna see how easy this comes together. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna sear our meat. Now a lot of people ask me, can I just skip this step? Do I really have to do searing? You don't have to, on most recipes, you don't have to do the searing and the sauteing part. However, I promise you, if you do saute, not just with the pot roast, but anytime you're doing a beef or chicken, but if you take the time to saute, you're gonna add so much more flavor, it's gonna take it up to a whole other level. So I would not skip this part, but it comes together really quickly and it'll be really fast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the saute button and then on this model, I'm gonna hit adjust so that I adjust it to, its, to where it says more. And that way it'll heat up faster. If your Instant Pot or electric pressure cooker doesn't have an adjust button, you would just hit the saute and toggle through until you get the more. Once our Instant Pot reads hot, we're gonna add three tablespoons of oil. And then we're going to saute each piece on every side. Now, we don't want to crowd the Instant Pot. We don't want to crowd it because anytime you're sauteing, you want to make sure that there's enough room for the water to evaporate. So I could probably saute three to four pieces at a time. To keep your pot and liner from moving when you're stirring or flipping your food, use an alligator clip clipped to the side and that'll keep it stable. And you'll see with a recipe like this where the meat will stick to the bottom as you remove it, if you don't have that alligator clip, the liner will just move around as a pan. Now it's important that when you're removing the roast, place it in a bowl or something that will be able to collect those juices because you want to add that back to the sauce later. I mean, that adds a lot of flavor. You don't want to get rid of that. Now I'm going to add another batch. And this time I can add four instead of three just because these are a little bit smaller. And again, make sure you let them have time to sear on all sides. It should take about two minutes. Another really helpful tip is to use a splatter screen. And that helps to keep the grease and all that oil when you're sauteing from just getting all over the place. And this isn't anything special. I, this is just one I use when I'm frying in my pan, but it works great and fits perfectly for the Instant Pot. Now that the last batch is done, and you can kind of tell I'm taking it out a little early just because, you know, for the sake of the video, but normally I'd let it brown a lot more, but that's okay. Um, you're again, you're gonna remove that and you're gonna set all of that aside and you'll see that there's a lot more grease and fat we'll call that flavor, that's left in the Instant Pot and you don't want to get rid of that. But you do want to lower the heat in order to saute the onions. So hit cancel, then press saute again and leave it at just the regular setting, normal or whatever. And add your onions. And because you have all of that fat from the beef, you don't really have to add any more oil. And you're gonna saute the onions for about five minutes until they get soft, translucent, and a little bit brown. And as they saute, they're gonna release some moisture. And as you see here, that's gonna help you to deglaze the pan by just using that to kind of scrub or scrape the bottom brown bits. And that will really help you make sure that you don't get the burn notice. And keep using your wooden spatula to just keep scraping the brown bits or the fond from the bottom. Now, if you feel like it's not coming up well and you need to add a little bit more moisture, that's okay. Just add about two tablespoons of water or chicken broth, whatever you're using, and that'll help eventually get it all off from the bottom. And as you can see here now, it's all scrubbed off. And so I pressed cancel to turn off the saute and we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. And first we're gonna add that braising liquid that we created. Make sure you mix it again to get everything distributed and just pour that right on in. 
and make sure to use a spatula to remove everything from the bowl. You don't want any of those spices or anything left in there. Give it a quick stir and now we're going to add the pot roast. And it's important that the pot roast be added and it's nice and submerged. So try to create a single layer first. And of course, it's not all going to fit in one single layer and that's okay. Just kind of smush it in wherever you can. As long as it's halfway submerged in the liquid, it's perfectly fine. And don't forget the most important part is all of those juices that have collected in the bowl or on your plate, make sure you add that back in. That's really important. And now that our meat is added, we're gonna go ahead and add the vegetables. And again, the reason we can cook the vegetables, potatoes and carrots all at the same time is because we're going to add them just to the top. And I promise you, the liquid will rise up and it'll cook perfectly, you don't have to worry about it. So I just add them to the top and then add the carrots. And if you notice here, these carrots, I could only find the organic ones, so they're a lot smaller. But those bigger pieces that you see there, that's the size that you really want. All of our ingredients are added, so we're ready to pressure cook. Make sure you remove the alligator clip. I forgot once and then couldn't figure out why my lid wouldn't go on. And once our lid is locked in, we're going to make sure the pressure release valve is set to the sealed position. And then we're going to press the manual button and pressure cook for 50 minutes on high. Now once it's done, we want to allow it to natural pressure release completely. And what that means is once it's completely counted down from 50 minutes to zero, your Instant Pot is going to then start counting up. And you're going to allow that to just, you're just going to leave it alone for about 20 minutes and the pressure will slowly release on its own. If after 20 minutes there's still pressure inside your Instant Pot and the little pin hasn't dropped, that's okay. Just turn your uh, valve to the vent position and just let off the rest of the steam. Now, before we open, I want to talk a little bit about a problem that some of my readers and beginners have with the Instant Pot, and that's once all the steam is released, they still sometimes can't open the lid. And that's because that little silver pin probably has gotten stuck. So you just jiggle it or push it down and it'll release and you should be able to open it no problem. And when we take off the lid, you'll notice that everything, all the vegetables are intact. They're not a mush or disintegrated. But you also can see that the potatoes have turned the color of the sauce. So they've really absorbed that sauce, which is the best part. Our pot roast is done cooking. And it's perfect to serve just like this. You can just spoon a little bit of the sauce over it. However, I like my sauce to be a little bit thicker. So a good trick is once you've removed all of the meat and the potatoes and the carrots and you put them in your serving dish, just press saute on your Instant Pot, let it come to a boil. And while that's happening, you're going to mix in one tablespoon of cornstarch with a quarter cup of cold water. And you just mix that together. And once the sauce has come to a boil, we're gonna add that straight in. And then we're going to whisk. And you're gonna whisk this for about two minutes and you'll see how this starts to thicken up. And then once it cools down, it'll become even thicker. Cornstarch has been added and whisked in and it's boiled for about a minute, the Instant Pot. And as it cools again, it will get a more of a thicker, velvety or texture and I really like it. But again, it's up to you. You don't have to do that. You can skip that part. And what I do before I serve is I just ladle some of that right over it. And serve. Now I want to go ahead and show you that the vegetables themselves, you'll see they still have, they still are intact. They're not falling apart or mushy at all, but they're soft enough to cut with a fork. Same with the carrots. So they still have some texture to them, but they're cooked through. And as for the meat, that's just falling apart. I mean, it's really spectacular. The Instant Pot does a great job. Look at that, you can cut it, cut it with a fork. It's great. Fantastic. You can find this recipe in the description below, but you can find all my other recipes at my blog, lanaunderpressure.com. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.